Hey guys, Swati here. Today we're going to be discussing a very important issue that no high altitude trekker can afford to ignore, and that's acute mountain sickness. And to talk about that, we have with us Arjun Majumdar, the founder of India Hikes. Hi, Arjun. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me on your show, Swati. So let's dive straight into the topic. So, Arjun, what exactly is acute mountain sickness, and you know how different is it from altitude sickness, and how bad can it get? See, ma, there's a misconception actually here. Altitude sickness is a broader term that we're talking about. and ams is the initial form of altitude sickness this can develop further into a more complicated uh, sickness which is called hes or hep which is nothing but high altitude uh, cerebral edema or high altitude pulmonary edema now how severe can it get uh, you can actually die so it can get very severe and it can get severe very quickly it ha- it can climb on you it can accelerate on you in couple of uh, hours Okay, so what really causes AMS? See, when we are climbing in the high altitudes, when we are going up in the Himalayas, especially above eight thousand feet and above, the oxygen available to you because of the lower pressure around you uh, becomes lower. Mm-hmm. Now, when you have lesser oxygen, and especially when you are exerting yourself more, your body really is not able to cope with the scarcity of oxygen, and especially your exertion that you are going uh, going through. your body gives you a signal to tell you to stop look you need to stop here and get used to the lesser availability of oxygen and then move forward and to do that your body gives it signals which is called altitude sickness okay so what really are the symptoms of acute mountain sickness and what do you what what are the first few symptoms that you see see there are many symptoms of uh, altitude sickness and uh, most people are of course very familiar with headache but they are not really familiar with the other symptoms which i would really like to throw light on uh, usually combined with headache uh, you tend to feel uh, uh, nauseatic you get this uh, very funny uneasy feeling in your stomach or even if you you would want to uh, vomit that's uh, another symptom that uh, really comes on uh, very quickly you also get the symptom of uh, you know light headedness or dizziness uh, you you feel extremely weak and fatigued these are the very common uh, symptoms of uh, altitude sickness now again i, I want to repeat there's a lot of people imagine that you'll get altitude sickness only if you have a headache mm. all of these feeling funny in the stomach and all these things may come even without headache okay, so and that that's, that's something you need to watch for so people might attribute those things to something else exactly they sometimes uh, attribute a feeling of uneasiness about something which they have eaten before or you know they have not digested their food too well but in the mountains there's only one golden rule if you're feeling uneasy attribute it to altitude sickness first start eliminating it mm. rather than start treating that symptom for uh, say an uneasy feeling with a say a digestion or something to take it off okay. it's more it's first you need to attribute it to altitude sickness okay. than anything else because um, your body is actually giving you a signal that look it has not been able to digest the food mm. and you must question why is because it's not got the required amount of uh, oxygen for it to be able to combust the food that is actually required in your stomach so it's it's kind of symptom showing up on you okay so i've actually heard that uh, ams is more prone to hit trekkers or trekking in groups or in big organization or something like that so is that true And yeah actually it is uh, very true uh, that you know I- I- especially if you are you know trekking in organizations like india hike so any or even in groups of friends of five or six it's more likely to hit you and it's it's actually more of a psychological reason than uh, the surroundings of the mountains what happens when you're traveling in an organized group there is a pace of a group with that you're trying to keep up to mm. and because there is this constant peer pressure of trying to keep up with the pace of the group A lot of people don't disclose that they are suffering from something, and that really uh, can, as I told you earlier, it can climb on you. Altitude sickness can climb on you very quickly. So if you don't dis- disclose to your group mates or your trek leader who is accompanying you that you are suffering from certain uh, symptoms, uh, it can be a little late. And and th- there's another thing which I've noticed um, uh, while you know dealing with so many trekkers is that people who are experienced. who have done multiple uh, high altitude treks they are very prone to altitude sickness not because then they don't know what happens is because 
they have a tremendous peer pressure not to talk about it is because they are the ones who have been instrumental in getting his their friends together on the trek and now he thinks that you know if i say that there's something wrong with me my friends will imagine that or whatever i look very uh, uh, what i would say i would look uh, like an ass in front of my <laughs> friends so i rather not do that and uh, he he actually stops disclosing this thing in fact most of the cases that we have had of altitude sickness at india hikes has usually been with the more experienced trekker rather than a first time trekker so it's not like only if you're a first time or like if you're a beginner that you get hit even when you're experienced and have trekked several times you can get hit by ams experience has got nothing to do with altitude sickness really i mean lot of trekkers come to us and say i've been on a bike ride to leh and uh, ladakh and i'm not likely to get or i have done this trek so and so your experience of trekking has got nothing to do with altitude sickness if you haven't done a high altitude trek in the last 15 days you are very much likely <laughs> to get hit by altitude sickness okay, so have you ever been hit by ms oh many times many okay. times I, i i cannot recall but many times okay and you're fine and sitting here now <laughs> so that's a good thing means it's not a very scary thing so i've also heard that you're more prone to acute mountain sickness when you're trekking in the indian himalayas or in nepal as compared to you know the alps is that true yeah that's how, again something uh, very um, true that you have heard of uh, swati that's because uh, in the indian and the nepal himalayas uh, it's it's the mountains the design of the mountains we climb very quickly if you notice if you ever go towards the uh, darjeeling side or the uttarakhand side uh, day 1 you're in the foothills day 2 you're at 9 10000 feet and you know day 3 you're at 12 13 uh, 15000 feet the mountains climb very very rapidly now really there's no other place to camp in between or do something like that so when you're climbing so rapidly you are very prone to altitude sickness okay so what you're saying is basically you need time to acclimatize wherever you go and you don't get a chance to do that exactly you don't get a chance in the indian and the nepal himalayas to acclimatize all the time uh, to do that they climb so rapidly it's not the time actually in your calendar time that we're talking about but the 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 time difference between the two camps say camp 1 is at 8000 feet your camp 2 may be at 12000 feet okay. now ideally that's not the right altitude to be at where the if you go on internet or google and everywhere you search uh, people are going to tell you that you know don't climb more than 1000 feet or at least don't sleep more than 1000 feet you may climb higher but ensure that you don't sleep more than 1000 feet higher than where you were earlier now that's all fine but in the indian and the nepal himal himalayas that's really not possible because most camps climb uh, very rapidly and the and the altitude difference between two camps is usually uh, anything between 2 and 1/2000 to 3000 4000 feet this is very very common in indian and nepal himalayas all right so how exactly do you deal with ams when it hits you so how do you treat it you can probably tell us briefly about that see the first thing that you got to keep in mind is that the moment you feel funny with anything mm. you need to alert your buddies around you or your trek leader i think this is the golden rule okay. denial has caused more death than altitude sickness okay. so first don't deny that something is wrong with you alert that's the most important thing because you have alerted somebody he or she can be wiser in dealing with it or will at least be able to get help if required so that that's uh, i would i would again and again stress on that alertness more than the treatment okay. and i will of course uh, talk about the treatment but uh, i i really would like to stress this that do not deny the fact that there's something is possibly wrong with you it can be a mild headache it can be a queasy feeling in your stomach dizziness feeling fin- fin- funny or it's just feeling extremely tired now mm. everybody knows on a trek you are likely to feel uh, very uh, uh tired at the end of a day's trek come on nobody does 7 to 8 hours of trekking in their daily life so you do feel tired but feeling weakness feeling a sense of extreme fatigue that's not okay which means that you have been affected by something your body is not really able to cope now there's uh, there's something else which happens with altitude sickness altitude sickness just doesn't happen the moment you reach a high altitude it takes time for altitude sickness to hit you it takes 2 3 4 hours mm. for it to actually climb on you Uh, in the initial stages so now suppose you have climbed from say 8000 feet to a camp at 10 or 11000 feet 
then you have reached the round about 1 in the afternoon but in most probability you are likely to see this altitude sickness coming on to you maybe about 5 or 6 in the evening when rescue or even descending is slowly losing its probabilities and towards the evening or night it come on wallops up on you it climbs on you very very rapidly so which is why it is very important that you alert people as uh, quickly as possible when you see the first uh, initial uh, signs uh, of it. Okay, so now that we have learned what acute mountain sickness is and we have learned briefly how it can be treated, I mean the idea is to tell people that something is happening to you and not deny it. So in the next episode, we will tell you exactly how Arjun dealt with his acute mountain sickness and also how you can treat it and also prevent it. So stay tuned.